So I lost the bet and had to drink the whole glass, Joe said shivering with repulsion at the memory of the vile concoction. It tasted like Ulu food. Have you ever even had Ulu food? Willow quipped back, hoping her brother would realize how rude he was being. No, and I never will, Joe responded, apparently not seeing the problem. Why not? Isn't the whole point of IGU to try new things? She asked. Well, Joe looked across the dinner table to their mom and dad, then after thinking for a moment said, Because I know the Ulu. Willow rolled her eyes, excused herself from dinner and went to go finish packing. She was getting tired of her older brother's speciesism and was a little embarrassed that her genetic relationship to him was a factor in her being accepted to the IGU, Intergalactic University. Apparently, genetic relations and degree of concern of those relationships differ greatly among species, and the IGU felt that combination would be a good addition to assist with culture emergence. Willow thought the culture emergence had somehow made Joe even more of a human supremacist, and she was looking forward to taking him down a peg when she got there. The whole point of the IGU was so that different sentient species could come together and learn to get along. The idea was simple and hopeful. There had been too much culture clash among different species in the past with often dangerous and occasionally deadly consequences. Rather than trying to force one species to get along with another one's culture, or designing something authoritarian from the top down, make a place where they must get along and keep them from killing each other. Then let the interspecies culture emerge and evolve naturally. Universal translators would allow communication. Medical and environmental suits would allow most students to go into most places and could start warnings and basic medical treatments if things got too bad. Consumption scanners would inform users of how dangerous any random substance was for them before eating or drinking it. And of course, each species would have their own habitat as a dorm that was optimized for their own biology and their own species customs. But that was about it. Keep the students from killing themselves or each other, teach the classes, require them to work together, and let everything else sort itself out. Much more would be an imposition and defeat the point of the program. All of that was nice in theory, but Willow didn't like the changes she saw in her brother. He'd even cut his hair in a weird way early on, then never changed it. It all seemed almost cultish, but it was also the prestigious university. Anyone graduating from there would be a first pick among many if the job involved working interspecies from commerce to diplomacy or even consulting. So she was on her way. It was all quite disorientating trying to get accustomed to everything. One day within the first month, suddenly half her Xeno classmates and some of her professors didn't recognize her at all. Fortunately, the student IDs used Bioscan confirmation of identity because she almost got chased out of orbital mechanics by the angry Nutar professor. Her roommate Katie explained that Xenos almost always have a hard time differentiating particular members of a species. Because she'd changed the way she wore her hair, she looked like a different human to many of them. As a courtesy, she should probably pick a way she likes it styled and try to stick to that. Despite all the problems of adjusting, Willow was starting to get along. She was even making lots of friends. The Ulu Dorm, a giant larva-like race, was a dark and cool. The Phalax Dorm was built like an oversized jungle gym to sweet their cat-like nature. The humans, Phalax, and other Death Worlders got along well in their own way that intimidated prey species. Thought all were welcome. Few other species except Death Worlders went into these dorms. It was just too terrifying to be surrounded by that many predators restrained only by local custom. One or two death worlders in a prey dorm could be tolerated if they wore a mask to hide their teeth. Didn't make any loud noises or quick movements and assumed everything was made of cardboard until informed otherwise. But too many of them at home and home stopped feeling safe. The Raktu dorm, a lizard-like race, was basically a sauna and Willow was invited to treat it as such occasionally, provided she was alone and wore a mask. Willow and Gazen had been working together on their pneumatic project for the Synthetic Intelligence course. Being an Ulu, Gazen had an intuitive understanding of fluid dynamics, and Willow's grasp of neural networks was invaluable. Hey, I think we could get this project done today if we really crunch on it tonight. Can I hang out at your place so we can finish it? Willow asked. She knew an Ulu would feel uneasy at the human dorm, but was hoping Gazen would allow her into the Ulus. Um, 
It'd probably have to be my niche. A Death Worlder hanging out in the common area isn't a good idea, especially with so many of us malting. No problem. Should I wear a mask? Just through the commons. I'm used to you at this point, but you'll need your own work light. I don't have one. They went to the Ulu habitat. The scarlet glowing moss lit the way through the tunnels, and the smell reminded Willow of soil after a thunderstorm. She was careful to wear her mask, keep her head down, and make herself as small as possible till they got to Gazen's niche. She waited till he unfurled an opaque waxy covering to the entrance before taking off her mask and turning on her light. The moss dimmed to black in the presence of the bright light and they got to work. After a few hours and great progress, Gazen slithered across the niche and pulled a small container out of his storage pod. Hey, I'm getting hungry. Do you want to go eat something and come together back in an hour to finish? Gazen asked. What are you having? Something I made yesterday. Don't worry, you can go out to get something to eat. I'll let you back in later so we can finish. Can I try it? Um, are you sure it's not fresh? Gazen said as orange and blue stripes rippled along his body. Willow knew those colors on an Ulu meant a combination of surprise and confusion, but not fear. She'd seen it plenty of times in class when a professor had explained something counterintuitive, but ultimately logical. She wanted to play it cool and improve interspecies relationships. Well, let me scan it, she said, and pulled out her consumption scanner. Gazen opened the small container revealing something that looked like stringy rice pressed into a burrito shape, like uncut sushi. After a slight hum and a beep, the results were in. The CS indicated it was only mildly nutritious to humans, non-neuroactive, and no more toxic than the beer Ryan had been secretly brewing in his closet. It says we're good, Willow announced. I guess humans will eat anything, Gazen said as his colors calmed down. Maybe that's why we make great diplomats, Willow said, trying again to build bridges. They split the leftovers. It didn't taste bad. It barely had any taste at all. Once they finished eating, they got the last of their project, completed it in no time, and called it a night. Hey, thanks for coming by. You're cool for a human, Gazen said as he slithered her out of the habitat. Thanks for hosting me. I know humans can have a bad reputation sometimes, but we're not all bad. As she walked back to the human dorm, she heard a strange combination of loud laughter, roars, and something squealing coming from inside. Once she got in, there was quite a strange sight. Humans were sitting around the coffee table with a felax perched on the back of each sofa. That was nothing new. What was out of the ordinary was Yarziz, a Raktu from her synthetic intelligence class sitting alone in a room full of death worlders curled up next to Joe looking oddly calm. Yarziz? Willow asked. Oh, hey Willow, what up? How's Gazen? Did you know humans are terrifying when they all laugh together? Oh, I guess you did know that, the Raktu squealed in a loud, chittering voice. Willow looked around at all the bemused grins on everyone's faces. Are you all torturing the poor Raktu? Not at all, Yarziz pipped up. I'm in a differential psychology class. I'm on a medication that allows me to feel all my emotions without feeling the impulses they cause. Everyone here is helping me. I've never been so terrified in my life. This is great, I'm not even flitting, see? Yarzi stroked the quills down his back that would normally be stretched out and about to shoot at threats if he weren't medicated, then went back to clinging to Joe. Humans are so warm. Have you ever been hugged by a human? Oh right, of course you have. This is intense. Obviously, the medication doesn't affect their speech, just physiology, Joe said. How's Gizen? He's good. We finished our project and I even tried something you were too afraid to. What's that? I had Ulu food. The humans went silent with their mouths agape. The phylaxes looked at each other with widening grins, their tails whipping with pride. Wow, humans will eat anything, that is a lot of teeth. Do you guys never freak out around this many teeth? How do you all stand mirrors? Yarziz blabbed, simultaneously completely overwhelmed by yet perfectly comfortable in the situation. Apex predators my ass, humans will eat anything, Grangor said, whipping his tail around even more. Fuck you! She didn't know! Joe shouted to the phylaxes while jumping to his feet. Whee! Yarziz said like a kid on a roller coaster. Know what? Willow asked. Come on, I can't wait to share this back at the den, Granger said, leading the rest of the phylaxes out. Joe tried to calm himself down from the obvious blow to his pride. 
Some of the humans went to their rooms, covering their mouths as if nauseous. After taking a deep breath, Joe turned to the Rock Two, who hadn't let go of him when he stood up. Yarzis, how do you feel about walking around the human dorm, alone down dark hallways and on a mission? Joe asked, digging his room card out of his pocket. That sounds horrifying, I'd love to. Behind the mirror above the hydro dispenser, there should be a clear bottle with a white lid and a green liquid inside. Will you get that and bring it back for me? He asked. Yarziz took the key and skittered off. Why is everyone acting weird? I scanned it. It was fine. Tell me what happened, Joe said, and be specific with the details. Willow recounted the evening in the project. When she got to the part where they ate dinner, some more humans left the commons like the others had. By the time she finished, Yarziz had come back with the mouthwash. The Ulu, Joe said, sliding the bottle in front of Willow. Our coprophagique. What does that mean? He thought for a moment, trying to find the most delicate way to explain it. They don't have an efficient digestive system, so they eat things multiple times, getting a bit more nutrition out of it each time they re-eat it. Willow was quiet until what he said started to click. No, she said in quiet disbelief, realizing the implication. Gazen would have said something. He would have... How could he not? He did. He said it wasn't fresh and that he made it yesterday. No way! The scan came back clean! The CS checks for toxicity and nutrition. It doesn't care about source, just safety. Why didn't you explain that back on Terra? Because it was a family dinner. We were eating. I thought you were just being prejudiced by calling things you didn't like Ulu food. Species prejudices exist for a reason. For example, Xenos think humans will eat anything. 